Hi everybody, welcome to this week's ACT prep webinar. This week we're covering the reading section of the ACT exam. Just a reminder, I am Dr. Mary Cook. I'm the ACT coordinator for Metro Nashville Public Schools. This week's presenter is Dr. Alana Coles from Maplewood School, High School. She is the literacy coach there. If you were here with us for the English section, you'll remember Dr. Cole, she presented that section as well. She has a lot of information about the reading section. It's a packed presentation. Uh, again, everybody's on mute right now, which is great. It is probably easier to come off from mute to ask your questions, so please feel comfortable doing that. We love that. It helps. It makes it more entertaining for us. It's easier for you to ask questions if you're engaged. You're also welcome to put your questions in the chat as, um, if that's how you want to do it. Um, but do definitely ask us questions at any point. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn over the reins of the program over to Dr. Coles. Away you go. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Dr. Coles. I am the literacy coach at Maplewood, as Dr. Cook said. I taught English at Stratford and I taught English at Hunters Lane and I've taught English at Pope John Paul II. And I'm a graduate of the University of Tennessee in Knoxville in 1996. And then again in 1998 and then I got my doctorate at, at Trevecca. So I just wanted to give you my college background too, because I mean, that's why we're taking the ACT is to get money for, um, college or technology, whatever we want to do after we leave high school for secondary education. So uh, first of all, I want to share my screen and I'm going to show you one of the things I'm going to be utilizing today. One of the things I'm going to be utilizing is something you have in your email. And that is the reading section of the PDF Dr. Cook emailed to you all. So I'm going to be using these pages quite a bit um, in my examples. And I'm going to pull up my presentation. Everybody see my screen? Yes, we can. OK, perfect. OK. So what is the purpose of this presentation? The purpose is to understand the layout of the ACT reading test and to understand the importance of using specific ACT reading test taking strategies. So um, the ACT test is made up of four sections, right? The first one's English, the second math, and today we're talking about the third one, which is reading. Now there are strategies that go along to the entire ACT test, and then there are strategies that are test specific. So we are gonna be talking about ACT reading specific strategies. OK. Reading test overview. The reading test is the third test on the ACT. There are four passages that each have 10 questions, 40 questions total. You have 30 minutes to complete this section. The college readiness benchmark, benchmark is a 22. So. On the ACT, you know, the highest score you can get is a 36. Well, you have individual scores for each section, four sections, and then those average out, right? So the college readiness benchmark for the reading test is actually a 22. And what that means is that if you make a 22 on the ACT, that means that you will likely make a B plus or, or better in your college level classes. And in order to get a 22 on the reading test, you need to get about 24 to 20, 20 to 24 questions correct, a little more than half actually out of the 40. All right, so what types of passages are on the reading ACT? So you get one of each kind. You get one that's fiction. That's the word, the fancy word there is prose. Prose just means not poetry. That's all it means. So you get one prose, and that's fiction, literary, short story excerpt, novel, memoir, personal essays. And then the second, third, and fourth, 
The last three are nonfiction. They are called informational text. And I know in your junior English classes, you read a lot of informational text, nonfiction. And um, I think most of you are probably digging into the crucible right now. You probably read some articles or something that leads up to the crucible. So the crucible would be considered literary fiction. Things that you would read background knowledge would be info text. So the last three you see I put difficult. The first one's difficult and the rest are not as difficult. Now the average test taker would think the first passage is the most difficult. And here's the thing, when I say difficult on this, I don't mean necessarily hard because all of these passages are, are you read to get the answers. It's that simple. You have to read in order to answer the questions. The first one is the most difficult because it's going to take more of your time to read and you're going to see that the passage itself is actually longer than the other three passages on the reading test. But I'm going to show you examples of this along the way. So first of all, I want you to know I have two dogs behind me and it's raining so they didn't get their exercise. So they might be loud or rowdy. Just want you to know that's not me growling and barking. Um, okay, so the key to doing well on the reading section is simply read. Don't skim. Don't go read the questions first. You have to read. There is no quick fix. There's no quick strategy. You have to read. What we have to do is talk about things to manage our time so that we increase our odds of getting more answers correct. And here are some of the strategies in this PowerPoint we're going to talk about today to help you pace your time. Now, one of them is to target how many passages you want to read in order to aim for a number of correct answers. So the college readiness benchmark is a 21 to 23, right? 22. So you would need to read two and a half or such passages and then complete the questions for two and a half of those to get at that college readiness benchmark. Are there any questions up to this point? Anybody come in late? Have any questions they need me to answer? I see Dr. Cook. Oh, my dog's names. I have Ollie. Ollie is the two year old. He's the brown one. And I have Lucy, she's the five-year-old, and she's the white one that's just kind of laying behind me here. Okay. Any questions here? Do we know what these target scores, passage to read, answer correctly means? Anybody have any questions? Okay, so I'm going to keep going. All right, so the first major strategy for time, when we think about pacing ourselves on the ACT, is to simply guess on the first passage. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to show you what I mean here. So here's the first, let's say, the first passage we come to. And I've got some PowerPoint slides to show you. And I want you to see this first passage here. You have a passage A and a passage B. You have two different excerpts and it goes on into the next page. This passage takes up an, you know, a pretty amount. And then you have all the questions that take up a lot. So the strategy that I'm introducing first is to not read this first passage and not attempt to answer the first 10 questions, but simply bubble in an entire column. So let's say on this day, I have a crush on a guy named Danny for whatever reason. So I decide I'm going to use D, the D column for my guesses. So instead of reading the passage for the first one, I'm going to just bubble D or that last column all the way down. And I'm going to start with passage two instead. And in a minute, we're going to talk about why passage two instead of passage one. Let me go back to my PowerPoint. So 
I just showed you the example. So look, this particular passage on this practice test that Dr. Cook emailed you that comes from directly the ACT website, it has two passages within one and some of them do we can't know which act you take is going to have an excerpt from one thing and another thing side by side but this one does so what kind of questions do you think are going to follow in regard to a set of passages that are from two different things. You've been a student now, you've been in high school since ninth grade. Whenever your teacher gives you two excerpts, one from one, one short story, another from another, what usually happens? What kind of questions do you get asked when you get excerpts from two different things? Anybody want to write in the chat or come on to the mic? What kind of questions do you think will follow in regard to two passages in one? Good, thank you. You're absolutely right. Compare and contrast. Now, tell me about not if they're if that's hard, but does that about how long does it take you when you're when you're taking a test or you're doing something in class and you have to read a passage and then you have to read another and then you have to write about it does that is that easy to do is that something you can do within 10 minutes okay good well that's awesome all right so what i'm trying to get you what i'm trying to get you to think about is you have 35 minutes you have 35 minutes to to do this reading section so if you take the time and you do the first one and it's got you comparing and contrasting two passages you might want to think about do you have the time to do that because if you have i'm putting in the chat here if you have four passages right and you have I know you hear my dog and you have 40 questions. He's mad at me. And you have 35 minutes. Somebody do the math for me. How many minutes do you have to do each passage and answer 10 questions? Somebody do the math for me. I'm not a math person. I'm going to leave the math to you. How long do you have to get that done? You might want to take a guess. Good. Eight to 10 minutes max. That's not a lot of time, is it? Yeah, per passage. Yeah, so eight times four is 32, right? So that's right. No, eight times four. Y'all, come on now, help me here. So no, that's 20. Dr. Cock is cracking up with me. OK, good. Y'all are hilarious. I'm sitting here with a doctorate degree and I can't even do simple math right now. I'm brain dead. So you got to be strategic. I'm spending way too much time on this, but I want you to understand it's not that these are hard passages. It's that you want to maximize your time and you got to be strategic. So with that in mind, the literary passage might not be the one to begin with. Yes, less than one minute per question for the entire section. OK, so. Passage one types of questions. What do you notice? What do you notice about these questions over the literature passage? I'm going to set my timer for 30 seconds. And I want you to look at these questions and then I'm going to ask you to tell me what you noticed. Thank you. 
OK. So tell me. There are about 24 of you in here. What are some things that you notice about these questions? There are no wrong answers. We're just noticing. Some specify specific stories. The questions indicate what passage to refer. Some of them also tell you what lines to focus on. Good. OK, guys, tell me, talk to me about. Good. Liv just went right to what I was about to have you look at. It asked questions about passage A, then passage B, then one question comparing the two. OK, what do you notice about how they look on paper? Like, are the questions taking up a lot of space? Are they wordy? Are there lots of words in these questions? I'm going to pull up the PDF here. Yes, wordy. They're very wordy. Look how long question two is here. Like I went ahead. Question two is a pretty long question. Now, if you have less than a minute to answer question two, what do you think about that? Yes, a lot of them require looking back to text which take a while. Good live. Very good. All of these are correct and all of these are wow, why I'm building up the case. Thank you, Malik. Yes, they are trying to make you waste time. That is absolutely, absolutely 100% what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to build a case to make you see that the first passage is one, while it could be interesting, you might not want to choose it to be one that you read. Okay, so passage two. Now I'm going to actually pull up from the PDF that you all have. Let's look at passage two here. Passage two is informational. So I want you to look here. It is from an article. It's 93 something lines long. The first one is about that same length. OK. Pull in a little foot closer. Reading about. Kenny Holmes notes from a wedding here. Now let's look at these questions. Number 11, the main purpose of the passage is to. And then 13, one thing the passage is that. The longest question here, the longest wordiest question here looks like number 19. Right, and number 17. We have some that refer to line numbers. OK, now I want to ask you. Of those, which of these questions look easiest? Which of these questions look easiest to you? Do any of them look easy for passage two? Thank you. OK, good, good. All right, let's look at the next question, the next passage. I'll pull up the PDF here so it's easier. Passage three, this is another info text. This one's about photography. And I'm going to look at these questions. 21, which of the following rhetorical techniques does the author please really use in the passage? Guys, if you're reading Crucible right now, you're probably talking about rhetoric. Because there's lots of rhetoric in the Crucible. So what do they use? OK, and then we have it can most reasonably be inferred that the author's statements about educational use of photographs apply to photographs taken during what time period? Which of the following words has negative connotation? OK. 
Looks like 26 is one of the wordiest ones here. The author, number 29, indicates it for the sake of unbiased interpretation. 30, the word framed is used figuratively to describe. All right, so that's the third passage. Lots of line number references, right? And the final passage is natural science. Let's look at what it looks like on a piece of paper. Now, one thing I want you to notice is that the last passage is considered the one most like a textbook and traditionally considered the easiest. And when I say easiest, I mean the one that your chances of getting correct answer it, it goes up on this one because look at the types of questions here. The fourth paragraph marks a shift in the focus of the passage from. We have line numbers. Based on the passage, the authors use the word measuring. Line 12, another line number. And we have a summary question. And then based on the following, which of the following plants and animals employ a communal strategy? That comes from direct text. And we have a strong suggest, best paraphrase, more line numbers. 38, another line number. So do you see? Let me go back to my PowerPoint. And my questions. Passage four tends to be the easiest. So on the reading test, it's not that it goes in order of difficulty, but it kind of does because the first one is going to take up your most time and then the time consumers go down from the first to the last. Let me ask you, I just want to do a little check. Write a yes or no in the chat. How many of you have looked at the reading section of an ACT before? Yes or no? Let me just do a little poll here. Good, good, yes. Any more? There's 24 of you. Only two people, three people have said yes. Good. This makes me happy. Dr. Cook, this is awesome. Good. Okay. How many of you have been told some of the things that I've told you before about the first, first one being the one that takes up the most time? Yes or no? Who's been told that before? That the first passage takes up the most time. Okay, good. I'm glad I'm able to spread some information to you. Guys, what happens is if you're not somebody that takes AP literature and you're not somebody that likes to read a lot of fiction and novels, what happens is, is when you sit down and you open up, you get back, you get a break after math. And you come back after having a 10 minute break and you sit down and you really just want to be over it because you've done 75 questions on the English part and then you've done 60 questions on the math. You get a break, you come down, you sit down and you look and you're like, what? It's like an excerpt from Jane Eyre or something, which is a British novel from the 1800s. And it messes with your mind a little bit, but that's not going to happen to you guys because you're going to know that that's a trick and you're going to spring forward and you're going to guess on those first 10 questions and start with another passage. That's what you guys are going to do and increase your odds of getting more answers right in the amount of time that you have. OK, so let me get back to my PowerPoint. Any questions? OK, you've now seen an example of an entire reading test. Let's get specific. Can you guys hear my dog chewing on his bone over here? He's like got it on my leg. OK, strategy number one, use your knowledge. The ACT often has passages with which you are already familiar. If this happens, use your background knowledge. Let's try an example. OK, let's see if you can get this answer right without having read 
the passage. The author indicates that for the sake of an unbiased interpretation, compared to reading written documents with care, reading photographs with care is significantly more important, slightly more important, just as important, slightly less important. What do you think the answer is? Right, right, and don't be afraid to get it wrong. I'm just wanting to see how many of you understand what bias is enough to get this answer correct so I can show you that when you use your own knowledge about a topic, yes, put your answer in the chat. When you use your own knowledge about a topic, you can still increase your odds of getting it correct. Good, yes, yes, C is the answer. How do you know that? Anybody want to share? What do you mean by that? It's the odd one for you. Malik. Does anyone want to expand on how they knew that C would? Good, good, good job. C? When you know something about the topic, so like we know on this practice test, I'm going to show you again, that one of the topics is about photography or or one of them is about plants. When you know information, trust your gut and your own knowledge and common sense and go with it. OK. Strategy two, use the line numbers given. When a question refers to a line number, actually look. And sometimes that means you're going to have to look, you know, around the line number two. So let's see if we can get this one correct just with the information we have. However, when the sepals are sufficiently wetted, then the tension increases to such an extent that the lock mechanism snaps and the capsule explodes and releases the seeds. What? is the correct answer. Write it in the chat. What do you think the correct answer is? OK, good. G, how did you know? How did you get the answer? OK, because it made the most sense. Who knows the trick to understanding how to get these kind of answers correct? Besides just reading what's in the context. OK, so look, one thing you can do is obviously you can do, you know, process of elimination. Good, Rowan, that's exactly what I was going to say. Absolutely, I replace extent with degree. And that is a test taking strategy, you guys. Awesome. And also, well, you don't have to take the English 3 EOC anymore. Your EOC now is basically the ACT. When you have vocabulary type questions, just plug in. Which one sounds right to you? Plug it in, see if it makes sense. You're absolutely right. Good job, guys. OK, another line number example. So what I'm trying to do here, guys, I tried to go in and pull as many kinds of types of questions. I noticed a pattern of seeing so that because for me, knowledge is power. And one thing you need to do before test day is print up or pull up if you can't print it up. It's a lot. The study guide read the directions to the test before you sit down to take it so you don't waste time by reading directions because once they say go you don't want to spend time reading directions at that point you want to have familiarized with yourself with the test enough to know exactly what to do when you sit down so you don't waste time reading directions right knowledge is power 
So familiarizing yourself with the types of questions by going through and doing those practice tests is the best way. So for example, before Dr. Cook and I could um, become any kind of administrator, I'm sure she has her administrator license. I have my administrator license and we have to take a test and like you, it's like the ACT. It takes about three to four hours to do it. Um, I all I did was I paid for a practice test and I sat down one Saturday and I spent about three hours, three or four hours, and I did that test front to back and then I clicked submit and then it gives you all the answers you missed. So then I took my test book and every question I missed, I highlighted. And then I went back and tried to understand why I missed what I missed. And I did that about two good times. And guys, as a result, I did fairly well on that test. Why? Because knowledge is power. When you those practice tests are there for a reason. And I'm telling you, use that study guide that um, Dr. Cook sent the email. That's what I'm using for this PowerPoint. OK, I digress. Forgive my preaching. OK, so here's another one. What does paraphrase mean, guys? Which of the following provides the best paraphrase of lines 7 through 11? What does it mean to paraphrase? I see this question a lot on the ACT. Mm. What do you mean shorten? Good. Rewrite it in a different way with the same meaning. So I go back to the crucible because I know that's what most juniors are doing right now. Your teacher might have you to look at something John Proctor says and have you paraphrase it. That doesn't mean shorten it. A paraphrase is actually saying it's translating. So most of you are probably taking Spanish, French, Latin, German, because if you're on a certain track, you have to take a foreign language. Think about it like this. Paraphrase means translate. Use different words to say something the same way, but use different words. Summarize means to shorten. So a paragraph, if you gave a summary of a paragraph, that would just be given a sentence summary. If you give a paraphrase, that means you're going to rewrite that paragraph line by line in your own words. OK, so this is asking you to paraphrase lines 7 through 11. That's four lines. So you're going to have to. That's all that means. Put into different words. All right. Strategy three. Skip passages, not reading. That doesn't mean skip passages and questions. That means I'm not going to start with the first, the first um, test, the first uh, passage. I'm not going to read it. Therefore, I'm not going to do those 10 questions. But tell me, do I leave answers blank on the ACT? Yes or no in the chat box? Perfect. I love the quick responses. No, sir. No, ma'am. No, them. No, you do not leave bubbles blank. You do not get penalized for wrong answers. You pick a column and you bubble down. So when you get on test day and you turn to the reading section, what I would do because I'm strategic, I love literature. I read it for fun, but on the ACT day, I know me and I knew I'd get pulled into that piece of literature on the first passage and it would pull me in and I would spend too much time on it and there I'd be. So I'm going to turn and on my answer sheet for one through 10, I'm going to bubble D all the way down. Remember because when I'm in high school, I have a crush on a guy named Danny. I'm kidding. I didn't, but that's what I would do. I'd do D all the way down and then I would go to the next passage and begin. OK, so. Here's another strategy that people talk about. Let's say you looked at the next passage and like, I don't want to read about right there that right now. That looks kind of boring. 
we understand better when we're engaged. So, Danny, is that your name? Is that how you say? How do you say Dejane? Okay. Yeah, Danny. Is anybody named Danny anymore? I don't think I've seen that as a student in my class in years. All right. So remember, use the same column to guess throughout test when you decide. Leave no blanks. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I want to play a little quick game. I want to have a little activity here. In the chat, you're going to give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. We're only going to, I'm not even going to read the paragraph. I'm going to only read the top. Now, I will tell you this. When you take the ACT, let me make this bigger just a second. I want to show you the actual page. When you sit down for the ACT, now, you always want to make sure you read this part because you might have a question about the, this background information there. It's there for a reason. Now, listen clearly. You're not going to read this part at the top. You don't waste your time reading that. Look, it tells you there are several passages. Each passage has several questions. Choose the best answer. OK, we know that. Do not read that part on test day. You're going to. You want to make sure you actually read this part because it might be some context in there you need for the passage. So. We are going to do a series of reading that part. And I want you to give me a thumbs up, thumbs down if you think it's interesting or not. OK. Passage one, literary narrative. Which means it's a story and it's fiction. Passage A is adapted from the memoir, The Piano Shop on the Left Bank by Thad Carhart. Passage B is adapted from the article Me and My Violin by Arnold Steinhardt. Thumbs up, thumbs down. OK, next one. Informational text. This passage is adapted from the article Notes from a Wedding by Lauren Wilcox Pukowski. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Do we want to read about a wedding? You guys aren't playing with me. 24 people and only two people responding. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Passage three. This passage is adapted from the article Photography Changes How Cultural Groups Are Presented, Representative, and Perceived by Edwin Shipman. The author of the passage is a citizen of the Muscogee Creek Nation of Oklahoma. Okay. Thumbs up, thumbs down. This passage is adapted from Summer World, A Season of Bounty. And I see there is going to be about plants. Okay. Now, my point of this little thing was, is you can tell, first of all, that's hilarious, Deandra. First of all, you want to make sure you read that little background part because it can be important. But on ACT day, let's say that even though that first passage might seem interesting to you, it's a time consumer. So we're not going to spend our time on that first passage. And we're going to guess in the first 10. We're going to the next one. Do I want to read this next? I don't know. I don't know if I'm in the mood for that yet. I'm going to go to the next one. Make a quick decision. Read the passages out of order if you want to, but you don't want to mess up your answer booklet. So a strategy for that is to mark. I'm going to write this in the chat. Mark answers in your booklet first before transferring over to answer document. OK. Now we're going to do a whole or part thing. Because some people in the past may have told you that on standardized tests, you don't have to read the whole passage. You can go straight to the answers and then read as necessary to get your answers. How many have been told that before? Yes or no? Yes, you have been told that on standardized tests you don't have to read the whole passage. OK, do not listen to that. You must read the whole passage. 
read it first the first time, annotate it like your English and history or whoever teachers have told you, read it really well the first time. You have 35 minutes. Let's say that we're going to eliminate that first passage. That gives you 35 minutes to read three passages and do 30 questions really well. So we're going to mark up that text. So we're going to play a game called whole or part. In the chat box, write whole or write part based on the question. Does decide if the entire passage needs to have been read to answer the question or only part of it. OK, are you ready? Here's the first one. In contrast to the way the pianos are described in passage A, the passage author's violin and passage B is described as. Write in the chart whole if you need to have read the whole passage to get the answer to this or part. Well, there are 24 of you. Only two people have answered. Thank you. You are absolutely correct. Why? Why whole passage? Why am I yelling? I've had way too much caffeine. Why the whole passage? How do you know? It's because we never read it before. Right. And also, you're right. And also because if you're con good, good, good. Thank you, Liv. It requires a knowledge of both passages. Good job, guys. Thank you. Second one, the pat in passage B, the author most directly indicates that the violin is sometimes an adversary by saying that it. Yes, thank you for coming off mute. Whole or part? Come on, my wonderful juniors, whole or part? Do I need to read whole or part of it? Got a few of you. Yes, part, because it only says one passage, right? All right, question three. One theme of the passage is that. Whole or part? Yes, whole, because we're talking about the whole passage. Number four, which of the following events referred to in the passage occurred last chronologically? Good, whole, a few of you said whole. Question five, we have two more. The main purpose of the third paragraph is to. Good, part. This, which of the following actions referred to in the passage most clearly characterizes a hypothetical event rather than an actual event. Okay, so I'm seeing part the line numbers, line 17, line 18, 72, 83. One could argue both. You sure about the part there? What about that word characterizes? Mm. 
Okay, I'm going to go into the last one here. Let's see if you all get it right. The fourth paragraph marks a shift in the focus of the passage from You guys are some smart cookies. Good job. Why? What in that question made you know it's whole? The fourth paragraph marks a shift in the focus of the past Trump. If we were in person, I would have candy to give you, but I don't. Let's pretend. Good, Liv. Good. You need to know what happened before and after paragraph four. Good job. Okay. So, what did you notice? How important is it to read the entire passage before answering questions based upon the question examples we just saw? Tell me how important. Don't give me more adverbs. Tell me how. Why? Why is it? Why is it important to read the entire passage based on the questions we just saw? One reason. And you can't use an adjective or an adverb in your response. I need I need something specific. Give me one reason why. And I know it's a lot to ask of you at most almost five o'clock after being in so school all day. Yes, ma'am. So we can understand the passage. Yes, yes, to answer the question. Good. Most of the questions require the knowledge of the whole passage. Good job. You are absolutely right, because if you look back at the chat, most of them require whole. Good. Thank you so much, guys. So I know Dr. Cook has a kahoot that we can do in the last 10 minutes here, but in summary, you have 35 minutes for four passages with the with 40 total questions. The only real strategy for reading is read. The first passage is the most difficult and longest. And what we mean by most difficult, I want to clarify, it's not that it's just hard. Actually, the first passage is usually the most interesting. It's just that it's the most time consuming because it's literary in nature. Now, what is going to be your reading plan? Are you going to try to shoot to read all four passages and manage it in 35 minutes? Are you going to try to read just three passages? Are you going to do the two passage? Create a plan, pull up the study guide that you have in your email and practice practice. You have now how you have a month. You have a month. March 1st is a month away. Okay, Dr. Cook. Are you ready or you have a little bit more yet to go? I am done. I, I guess I want to ask uh, if anybody has any questions. Do I have any questions that they want to ask? Or do you want to play the Kahoot? Let me put the Kahoot on the screen to give people time to get signed up. This will give us a chance to review what Dr. Coles was just presenting to all of you just to kind of get it really ingrained so you, when it comes time to the test and you're a little bit nervous because that's how we all get, um, you will have all of these good tips in mind already. So the Kahoot code is on the screen and we're gonna look for some players to join us. And then also after the Kahoot, I'm gonna enter the link for that evaluation form into the chat so that you can share with us what your biggest takeaway was from the session, as well as what you wish you had learned um, so that we can make sure that we address that in our future sessions. That's important to us. We wanna make sure that we get the skills to you that you feel like you need or the questions that you have so that you are as ready as possible when the ACT comes up. All right, awesome. Look at you guys getting all signed up already. Had a few more, waiting on a few more to get signed up here. Thank you to the five of you that have gotten in onto the Kahoot. Like Dr. Cole said, we have about 20 of you in the group.
And while we're doing this, if you think of questions, you can continue to enter them into the chat. That's not a problem um, because both Dr. Coles and I are watching that chat. So if you think of something, you can go ahead and pop it in there. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna get started here in five, Four, three, two, oh, I'm going to say one really slow. Dr. Coles, there's a great question in the chat right now. Before I start, click ever. Is there I'm ever a situation where we should read the questions? No, not on the ACT or on the SAT. Because you, here's the thing, if you, if you read, if you read the, the passage and you really focus on what you're reading and make notes and interact with it, you're going to know exactly where to, where to look to get your answers. Does that make sense? I, I recommend after you read a pass, after you read a paragraph, make a little note of what's in that paragraph, like some kind of key word. And if you do that, we used to practice that in my junior English class. Every When we read that, that passage, every paragraph had some kind, one word, just some kind of something there. And then when you go answer those questions, it's gonna come to your mind where to look to get that answer. Thank you. That applies to the reading only. You're going to hear something very different in science next week. Yes, that is a reading only thing on the ACT. And I'm going to let you answer those in the chat so we can do the Kahoot, but I will come, we'll come back and read these questions being posted in the chat out loud so it is on the recording later. All right, so I'm starting the Kahoot. Got a good group here. So first question coming up. How many questions are on the ACT reading test? 30, 40, 50, or too many? Forty, there are 40 questions. That 30 probably tripped some people up because there are actually 35 minutes to do the 40 questions. So 40 questions on the test. <clears throat> and look at those points. Okay, question number two. About how many do you need to get correct to get a score of 22, the college readiness benchmark? Good, look at all of you got that one correct. You need to get slightly more than half of them to correct to reach that college readiness benchmark of 22. Question three, which types of uh, texts are used on the ACT reading test? Dr. Coles, do you want to jump in and talk about this one? So, I think what happened is, is that probably people looked at that first one on the red and saw prose fiction and science and didn't read the rest. So guys, prose fiction just means literary fiction. You know, social science, humanities, natural science. Books, poems, songs, short stories, those are all going to be excerpts. Well, the poems and songs are never on the ACT, but the books and short stories are going to be in the first one. Make sure you read through that practice test on the information about what each section is about. All right, moving on to the next question. Oh, a quick too fast. We'll we'll get caught up. Which of these is not a good strategy for the ACT reading test? Okay. 
There we go. So do the, um, this is, remember the, this is kind of an inverse question, not a good strategy. So do the passage that is your least favorite to get it over with. Not necessarily, um, that's, that is a bad strategy because that, that's, uh, passage that isn't your favorite may be the shortest one and so so that could be okay the other strategies were all good ones using that bubble of the day remember we're coloring the d because uh, dr coles had a crush on danny in high school so bubble of the day was a good one know the test uh, directions in advance so you're not spending time reading them that's a good one and then also guess on the first passage because it's the hardest that was the very first recommendation so so the other three were all good ones so that left the, the other one as being the bad one. This time I'll let the little ranking update. There we go. When you're given a line number, what should you do? Good, look at that line number in the passage. It's directing you right to where you need to be. Oh, Gabriel, I'm sorry, got you kicked out of the Kahoot. You can watch along with us and get those answers anyway. So, so that's what you need to do. It's a directing you to the part of the passage where the answer will be found. Two more. For line reference questions, do this. Yeah, read two or three lines ahead and after because you need to get the context to understand exactly what it is you need to do to get the correct answer. So you need that context a little bit ahead, a little bit after, and then you'll be able to pinpoint exactly what the correct answer is. And last one, process of elimination. We did not talk about this, but I think you can figure it out through process of elimination. There you go, eliminate answer choices that are obviously wrong. So if you can take out those ones that are wrong, even if there are just a couple that you can't quite decide between, you've uh, reduced the chance of marking a wrong answer. You've increased your opportunity of marking a correct answer. So eliminate those ones you know are just, there's no way they're correct. And then you'll have a better chance of getting the correct answer. So let's see who is at the top of our podium. Awesome job. Look at these points. Congratulations, Liv. Way to go. That's fantastic. So um, I want to back up and read the question that was posted just before we got this started. Um, it says, when taking the ACT, should you focus more on completion or getting the right answer? And Dr. Coles, do you want to go ahead and answer that? And while you're doing that, I'm going to put the evaluation link in the chat. Oh, yeah, I wrote. So you want to complete. You do not want to leave anything blank. So it's, it's twofold. You want to make sure something's bubbled in. But you also want to make sure you focus on getting the easier questions correct so you don't you know what I mean? You just want to make sure that you get the easier answers correct and you don't want to leave anything blank. Does that make sense? So, for example, let me pull up my, where's the, my downloads. For example, you have 40 questions on the reading ACT, right? You know you only have 35 minutes to do it. If you try to do all four passages, at least when I was in high school, 
at 17 years old, when I retook it as a senior, I knew that there was no way I was going to be able to read, for me personally, four passages in 35 minutes. And our English teacher told us, if you don't think you're going to finish, use the same column and bubble in because they have to give you a minute warning, right? That's they can't. That's the the final thing you have. They give you a minute warning. If that minute warning comes, no matter what test you're in, whether it's English, math, reading, or science, do not leave bubbles blank. Does that make sense? Who who was it that asked that question? That was Larissa. Larissa, are you still here? Does that make sense? Yeah, so she put into the chat that she understood uh, understands okay. now. So, so thank you. If you have some time, please click that link that's in the chat. You might have to scroll up a little bit for our evaluation form and share your thoughts and your insights. And then other than that, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And we hope that we see you and, and all three of the remaining webinars that are coming up. Have a fabulous day. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Be safe.